my team, we're going to do a little series and it's in relation to the run, aspects of it, and I'll do a part on each one. So the first one is vulnerability. The part of the run for this is wearing the budgies, which represents vulnerability. And I think this is, and sadly, a bit of a pressing issue because as of the time of filming, it's been about 24 hours since news broke that we just had another soldier uh, tragically take their life. I believe it was down in Sydney. So this is where this subject of vulnerability really comes up. Now, first of all, from everyone in uh, defence, in the community, all supporting, I want to give a big shout out. Everyone has really kind of stepped up. You know, um, they've uh, one of the biggest ones and also a sponsor of the run. Um, the Pineapple Express veteran community page uh, is huge. These guys are all over it and quite frankly, they, they do a lot better job than what Defence does at notifying people. So a big shout out to those guys and every time they put up a post, they're, they're always putting up um, the, the contact centres, the helplines, anything and everything, as well as doing your mate check. This is huge, guys. And the sad thing is that there is no real uh, sight or no real hope in the near future that things are getting done from the top down. So from a government level, we're pushing for it. There are multiple organisations pushing for, for it. Survive to Thrive is absolutely encouraging and doing their absolute best to get in front of government, make it a mandated course in order to help veterans that are transitioning. But obviously we still see this as an issue for current serving as well, people that are in there. And this is not to say that Survive to Thrive Nations program is only for people that have discharged. People that are in can do it as well. But it is obviously um, a, a very big issue that we're currently facing. And so to steer back to the reason I'm talking about vulnerability, I, I see the most well, well-wished, most pure, purest of intention posts come out after this and, and stories. People saying, you know, doesn't matter who you are, please contact me. Um, I'm always here for a chat. And don't get me wrong, we need these people, 100%. But for people that are truly going through something, that level of vulnerability isn't quite there. It's not, they're not in a place where they can sometimes just reach out. And I want to I wanna really put this forward and have this as food for thought, as well as a bit of a call to action for, for everyone to keep an eye out for their mates. It's a two-way street talking, right? You, you can't just talk at someone, they're not going to listen. You can't just expect someone to talk to you if you haven't built a level of trust. So the vulnerability goes both ways. In order, especially for someone that is going through stuff, like people may find that aren't suffering from mental health that it could be a little bit easier to be more vulnerable, especially around the ones they love and the ones that care for them. They may find this a bit easier, but people that are going through these tough times and especially, especially defense members when you know, it is indoctrinated into you to be tough, to be resilient. Sometimes it can be seen as a failure or, and I'm not, I'm not promoting this at all, but it can be seen as weak to speak. And it is obviously a great, uh, a great slogan. It isn't weak to speak, but it does take a lot more than just rocking up on the day and going, oh, hey, I am suffering from mental health issues. We need to, we need to establish a place of trust in order to become vulnerable. And I'll speak from personal circumstance. When I discharged from the army, I was in a place where I had lost all purpose. I identified as a soldier. That was my job. That was my personality. That was everything. It was everything to me. I absolutely loved the army at the time, but I also knew it just wasn't, I had to get out. And so upon discharge, Sorry, there's some weird shadows. But upon discharge, once I got out, I didn't realize, but you suddenly go from having a purpose, from having people that are there for you, for having, from having a team to having nothing. You are just another person 
with your own purpose, whatever that might be. And if you don't have one, then it can be tough to sort of find that purpose or find that reason for being again. And so I had to go, I went through this by myself and I'm not recommending that for anyone. I, I didn't feel I was ever in a place to be vulnerable to people. I had probably the best support network that people could have. I had all, I had all my mates. I had my family. Everyone was close. Everyone would always ask how I'm going. And the constant throwaway response was, yep, good. And then try and divert the conversation away to something else. And this is where, I, again, I want to say it's a two, it takes two to tango. It's a two-prong attack. In order for you to feel, in order for you to be vulnerable, you need to have that trust established. You need to establish trust. You need to, and it's not just obviously up to you, the person that is vulnerable. It's up to your friends as well. You need to establish that trust, and we need to let people know that it is safe, <clears throat> even when they're not going through something, to chat, to speak about what's going on, and to open up. But it takes time. And I think a really big thing here as well is when we are doing this and creating that, um, that, that place where we are able to become vulnerable is that we need to really open up that dialogue and we need to watch for the nuances. And those nuances might be, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're talking to a friend, you may notice that they're starting to, um, they're, they're starting to pull back they may not be the same person. And it can start off as very, very small things. You know, uh, mental health and anxiety, all of these things, they don't just, not always, I'm no professional, but not always, they don't just come on straight away. It's a build-up. And it's this constant chipping away that leads to not the inevitable, but to when people take their own lives, they feel like, that this pressure is built up so much and the only way to get rid of it, they feel like the only way that they can be free of this issue is from taking their own life, which is not the case. This is not what we want. So these nuances, watching for small little tells, it could be something like that you start to notice that they're, if you're sending memes, maybe they're not sending memes anymore. They're not reacting to a funny meme like they used to. It could be when you guys meet up that, you know, they're potentially not talking about currently what's going on. They're, they may be reminiscing on certain things or they're constantly bringing up the negatives and they're unable to find some joy as to what they used to find joy in. It can be other things like you just notice they don't smile as much anymore. Um, and like I said, these things can come on slowly, but if we establish this trust and we establish with these people that it is okay to be vulnerable, that they know all the time that if there is something going on, they can reach out. They can let you know how they're feeling. It can sometimes be as simple as that, but also it can be hard. It does take a keen eye to notice these things, to be able to see what's going on and then be able to make change or identify that change that they're going through. So this is really, the, and again, it all comes back to this vulnerability and why I'm running in the DT. So not only letting our friends and our loved ones know that they can be vulnerable but with us, but we can also be vulnerable with them or we can handle their vulnerability. We never want them to think that they're being a burden and we might say that as much as we mean it, but sometimes actions speak louder than words. So it may be a simple fact of you just inviting them over or they may be alluding to the fact that they want to catch up, but not ask outright. It's these little nuances that we need to pick up and you're going to know the people that you're close with, you're going to know this, you're going to pick it up pretty quick, but it's also having that key eye, keen eye, especially within our defense community that we have different ways um, and everyone has different ways of communicating how they're feeling. So it's picking up on those little nuances all the time. But anyway, guys, that is just the first segment um, as a part of the run. So vulnerability. And I thought it was a fitting time um, to speak about this because 
again, everyone that's been speaking out, that's been saying, you know, anyone that needs a hand, I, I'm not bagging that at all. I think it's absolutely great, but it's, it's also understanding as a community, as a whole, we need to create a safe space for our friends, for our loved ones. We need to let them know that they can be vulnerable. And then if we, if, if you are going through something, you need to understand that being vulnerable, it is also a strong thing. Like it's strong to be vulnerable. It's, it's not weak to open up and be able to talk to people and communicate how you're feeling and especially asking for help. That is not weak. That is, that is strength whether it's your mental health, whether it's business, anything, it is never weak to ask for help and be vulnerable. So like I said, it's a, it's a two-prong attack. We need to let people know that they can be vulnerable. We need to establish this trust. But then if we're going through something, we need to be strong enough to be vulnerable and we need to you know, make sure we have these relationships, which we all do, which can lead to open, honest communication and potentially some breakthroughs or seeking help or just being able to lift some weight off our shoulders. So that's all I've got to say on that topic for now, guys. Um, of course, I'll always be fighting the good fight. Um, like I said, it's not a throwaway, but if anyone ever has something going on, always welcome to reach out. Anyone is, you've got your support networks. My support network um, knows that they can reach out to me at any time. Come do a gym session. I find that's where I'm generally the most honest is in the gym session when I'm pushing through some heavy weights. But guys, if you would like to help make a change, especially within defense for our veterans, for our veteran um, veteran communities, mental health, and this suicide epidemic that we are clearly going through, both current serving and former serving, if you'd like to help make a change, if you'd like to challenge yourself, come down to the Weight of War run um, on December 3rd down at Felons. You don't need to run, but if you want to, if you want to challenge yourself, I highly implore you to get behind that. Guys, if you want to just come down and have a great time, we're also got a, we're having a party down there, so we'd love to see you down there from 12 noon on the 3rd of December. Help get around everyone. And guys, if you would like to donate, um, and of course, your money goes straight towards sponsoring veterans onto the Survive to Thrive nation program it is a proven program over 6,000 veterans have been on this program and have passed there's been a zero percent suicide rate from past people on this program it is huge it is working and we need to get the word out the more veterans we can get on this hopefully we can start to put a stop to this needless loss of life that our community is suffering from